Okay, so I have to talk about paint. Um, every single day I'm on Facebook, I see somebody post something asking about what kind of paint should I use for my custom figures? What kind of paint should I use to paint my custom Deadpool? Should I use acrylic or should I use enamel or should I use something, something? What should I use? This goes on constantly and it is actually kind of maddening when you see people post stuff without doing any research. The research should really be done because there's a million YouTube tutorial videos out there of what you can and what you shouldn't and what you should use. Um, so I decided to do one of those videos myself to try to help you guys out a little bit. Um, so I'm going to kind of keep this as brief as possible so everyone can see it and we're going to kind of go through different types. This is modern Model Masters. Uh, it's made by testers. It's a good paint. Um, it, it comes in different colors, some flats, some semi-gloss, some glossy. Um, it mixes really well. Um, I use this a lot. It's thin enough. Usually you don't have to thin it too much. Every one of these you're going to have to thin a little bit. Um, you can thin it with water. You can thin it with different solutions that actually are made specifically to thin paint. You should paint on a like milk consistency. Um, multiple layers of paint in that, that thin layer and let it dry in between fully. You have to be patient with this stuff. If you don't do that, you're going to get clumpy paint. You're going to get, you're going to pull the paint off before it dries when you're doing your second or third coat. Um, it's just going to look like crap. So you have to be patient. Uh, I mean, sometimes a figure is going to take five coats of paint, um, just to get it to look good for the base coat before you do a wash or a wipe or a dry brush technique or airbrushing before you do any of that stuff just to get the color you want as a base coat might take you five coats and if you're working with something like yellow um, or you're working with something like white it's gonna be difficult and there's a couple tricks to that type of stuff too so but I'll talk about that in a minute after I get through what to use and what type of paint to use so we started talking about this testers makes this testers has been around they make model paint don't use enamel. There's there's like kits out there of testers it's, that, that are junk and they're enamel. My first mistake in 1995, God, I'm dating myself here, was making a Luke Skywalker Power of the Force Return of the Jedi figure by repainting the regular Tatooine Luke um, and trying to sculpt the boots correctly. I used a cr I'm sorry, I used enamel paint and the damn thing stayed sticky forever. I think it's probably still not dry um, from 1995. It will never work. It will always be sticky. It will never, ever dry. It will always ruin your custom figure and you will have to throw the thing away. You will never be able to remove that paint. Stay away from enamel. Acrylic paints, testers, this is good. It coats really well. It works. There's other things you need to take into account too. You, need, you should be sanding your figure. You need to prep things. You should be washing your figure with just straight up normal soap and water. Um, you should be sanding it, getting the paint to adhere to that sanded surface instead of having any layer on it whatsoever. When you take a figure out of the mold, there's a mold release that kind of acts as like a lubricant to be able to pop it out of the mold. Um, and that stays on the plastic a lot of times. So without washing it and without sanding everything down, um, that stuff's still going to be present when you buy this thing. It's still going to be on there. So you got to get rid of that before you do any of that stuff. So I sand my figures. I wash my figures. I sand my figures. I prime my figures. You can get primer anywhere. A lot of people are using automotive primers. Um, that's one way to do it. I'll show you one of those. Um, this is the one that I use. It's Duplicolor. It's vinyl and fabric. Um, you can buy that in Pep Boys or wherever. I use that a lot. Um, if you want that, that's always a good way to go. Some people just use other things like um, Tamiya uh, primers or um, Citadel primers. Those work well too. And you can get them in white, black, gray, whatever color you're really looking for. And that varies. If you do something in white and then you paint yellow over top of it, it's going to look one way. If you do something in black and then paint yellow on top of it, it's going to look a different way. So you kind of need to play with it and practice with it to kind of understand where you want to go with things. And if you don't do that, you're going to have mixed results with what you're trying to get and what you're trying to do. So 
This game color one and this model color one, these two are made by the same company. It's Vallejo. You can see they look similar, but not exactly the same. They're the same paints. They're just two different colors, two different ways they call it. I don't know why, but these are good paints. Um, I like them a lot. Um, I think they're good. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use these things more than any other paint out there. Um, any of these things are actually good options. I just had to get up for a second and grab another one that I forgot to actually include in here. These are good options. Um, they're a little bit thicker. They need to be thin more than this does, um, but they're good. Um, Citadel is what I see a lot of people painting with. Um, these are the ones that I guess are... Oh, shit, I just forgot the name of that thing. Whatever that game is, um, War, Warhammer. Um, you see that stuff in a lot of those those stores where people are playing tournaments and they're they're painting miniatures. These paints are really not made. None of these are really made for action figures. You still have to do everything. If you don't sand down these joints and, and make sure there's no contact with th this internal disc and the inside part of here, it's going to rub off. You have to disassemble your figures or you have to somehow get a tool in here to sand in that disc. And if you don't sand in that disc, you're always going to have contact. You're always going to have paint rub. You can paint that red, you can paint that black, and you move it a couple times, it's still gonna be yellow. It's still gonna, all that paint's gonna come off of it because you didn't do what you were supposed to do with it. So that's a problem. Make sure you do that stuff. You have to, like I said, washing, sanding, painting, priming, all that stuff all comes hand in hand. You can't just throw this stuff on and expect it to look good. It's not gonna happen. So I might do some other tutorials and stuff about how to do that. This is how to use paint though, which paints to buy. This stuff's okay, but I think it's really made specifically for those Warhammer things. You can get a lot of cool effects with it. It's not the one that I buy the most of though. Um, not everybody, every artist has their own favorite stuff they use, every brand they, they like. Um, I started playing around with animation cell paints recently. Um, I've played with automotive paints. Everything works in certain media. You just gotta play with it. Formula P3. Um, Formula P3 is probably my favorite paint. Um, it's thin, it's very similar to this consistency. It only needs to be thinned a little bit. It goes on really well, it goes on really smooth. Um, I don't have too many issues with it. I like the coverage I get with it. I don't have to do as many layers with it. Similar to Model Masters. Um, I just like Formula P3 a little bit better. Um, I've seen a couple other artists, um, including um, I think Mike Delapaz uses that pretty much exclusively now. I don't think he's using any other stuff. I've seen most of his, his work in progress stuff being um, Formula P3 recently. Uh, so I think it's being used more widespread with people now. Um, but everybody mixes everything. You can see all, every, I have all of these different kinds here just because I grab stuff and I try different stuff and I try different techniques. And there's no reason why I can't take a Formula 3, P3 paint and mix it with a Vallejo paint, whatever works. Tamiya. Tamiya is a really thin paint. It's a Japanese brand. Um, it's made from model kits. Um, there's, again, every one of these have metallics and flats and glosses and semi-glosses. You can spend a fortune in paint, um, but you still need to know how to use it. So you might want to try getting flat. You might want to try getting a semi-gloss. You can do whatever you want to do and find stuff that works for you. Uh, this is a semi-gloss black. I like how this this goes on versus a, to me a semi-gloss black because I just played with it and I just happened to like it a little bit better. That's me. Um, this stuff's good. I really like their metallics a lot. They have metallics and they have clear uh, paint. So if you do a silver, um, a silver figure um, or you have metallic parts to a figure, if you cover the clear over top of that, it looks really cool. Um, because the light will be able to go through the clear portion of a red, a yellow, a green, blue, whatever, and then reflect off of the silver underneath of it and come off of the metallic itself. But then the metallics are pretty cool in itself. Um, there's all sorts of techniques and stuff you can use, and there's all sorts of technical paints, like Citadel makes blood and they make pus. These paints basically look like certain techniques they look like snot they look like infection they look like blood and gore some of the other ones look like rust some of them look like dirt 
um, you, there's no end to what you can buy and what you can make. You just have to know how to do it. Never buy, use this stuff on custom figures. This is the worst stuff ever. If anyone tells you this stuff's as good as any of the stuff behind it, it's all about prepping your figure and knowing how to paint it, they're lying. They're lying. This is terrible. Why do I have this? Because it works fine when you're building a diorama because I'm not moving, I don't have any moving parts. Um, I, it just sits there. It works fine for coverage of a large area of styrofoam or board or some sort of area that, that I'm gonna have a figure resting on as a base. Um, but as far as an actual figure itself, as far as adhering to plastic, it doesn't work well. None of these craft paints do. I don't care if it's Craft Smart here. I don't care if it's the Martha Stewart brand. I don't care if it's App Apple Barrel. I don't care if it's any of those, they don't work. They're garbage. So do not use these on action figures. You will have poor results. Um, the rest of these are good. So anything from Model Masters to Vallejo paints, whether it be game color or model color, to Citadel paints with all of their different technicals. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can read about and learn about by looking at different tutorials out there on that stuff. To Formula P3, whether it's metallics or different shades of, of flat colors. Um, to all the different types of Tamiya, whether it's flat, semi-gloss, gloss, clear, um, or metallics. Those are the paints I use. Those are the paints that I would buy. I'm sure there's going to be some questions down below. I will help you guys out with the best I possibly can to kind of coach you on what to buy and what to get and how to do things. I'll probably do some painting tutorials and probably do some live painting if you guys are actually interested in seeing that. I'm not sure that anyone wants to see that or not. But if you want to see live customizing and you want to see live painting and te uh, paint techniques on how to do washes, how to do wipes, how to do dry brushing, how to do all that stuff. How do I get yellow paint to work? How do I get white paint to work? How do I do all these things? Do I need to bear buy an airbrush or can I hand paint stuff? How do I get paint that looks like blood? If you guys want to know that stuff, I'll be happy to do it and put it on the channel. I just need to know and I need the feedback. So um, that is really it. Feel free to comment, ask questions, write any concerns down below. Check out the rest of the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check off the uh, alerts so you get noticed when there is another video that goes live. Check out the Komoda Customs Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter feeds. And check out all the other videos on the channel. I review um, mostly Marvel Legends anymore, but I review figures that I buy. Um, and I review everything that I make. So check out all these stuff that's been going on for the past couple years on the channel um, and check out those videos, including stuff that I guess will be coming out relatively soon as far as how to make customs. Thanks for checking it out.